Excavators contain many unique engineering mechanisms within them. When a driver's skill is combined with the amazing engineering of excavators, miracles happen. Here is one example. This excavator driver is struggling to unload the material from a wagon. The best solution here is to keep the excavator on this raised platform. In this new elevated position, the excavator does its job perfectly. However, the question is, how can we make the excavator climb up such big steps? As humans, when we want to climb up a big step, what do we usually do? We fix our arms on the step and climb it as shown. The excavator must do the same thing. Fixing the arm allows it to climb up effortlessly. Obviously, this action does not occur exactly as is demonstrated in these visuals. The excavator is not a superman. Let's first see how the arm is fixed to the platform properly. The arm is controlled by these joysticks. When the driver moves the left joystick forward, high-pressure fluid enters the cylinder of the arm. When this happens, the arm rolls out. Now, it's time to make the bucket curl downwards. To do this, simply activate the right joystick. You can see how this beautiful mechanism is activated by the piston movement and moves the bucket downwards. As you probably noticed, the excavator's arm has one more piston cylinder arrangement. This cylinder is known as the boom cylinder. To activate this cylinder, the driver uses the right lever again. However, this time it's moved in a perpendicular direction. It's pretty easy to guess what will happen if you activate the boom cylinder. The boom of the excavator will come down and the bucket will press properly against the platform. This produces a tremendous frictional force between the bucket and the platform. As a result, the bucket is locked to the platform when the boom cylinder is activated. We can consider the bucket as a strong arm grip. What will happen if the excavator driver further increases the pressure in the piston? The boom will not be able to go down any further. It's stuck. Consider pausing the video here to take a moment to think about what you believe will happen in this case. The pressurized fluid also applies a force on the cylinder. Since the piston is stuck, the cylinder will move up relative to the piston. Let's pan the camera out to get a different perspective of this operation. The cylinder is connected to the front of the excavator body. This means the excavator body will tilt up as shown. Let's repeat this animation so you can observe everything carefully. Along with this body tilt, the track is also rotated to move the body forward. Eventually, the excavator body can rest on the edge of the platform in a stable position. Once the excavator rests on the edge of the platform, the arm can be removed from the platform. Next, we can observe the wonder behind the excavator's swing motor. The swing motor is hydraulically powered and can rotate the excavator's body 360 degrees. When the driver operates the swing motor, the excavator body spins. From this position, spin the excavator body by 180 degrees. In this new position, the bucket is once again pressed against the ground, forming a fixed point. What do you think the driver should do? Should they increase or decrease the length of the boom cylinder? If you said they should decrease the length, you are right. The excavator body stands horizontal now. The remaining operation is simple. Just move the excavator backward. Since there's one more step to climb, the driver will have to repeat all the operations once again. From this elevated position, the excavator can do its task quite efficiently. Have you ever seen or been curious about what's inside this track geometry? If you remove this cover, you'll come across this beautiful and crucial engineering device, a hydraulic motor. The hydraulic motor runs a sprocket, which runs the track. Interestingly, this motor does not run on electricity, but on high-pressure fluid. The way a high-pressure fluid rotates the hydraulic motor is illustrated here. The high-pressure fluid in the bottom region wants to move the piston towards the left. Similarly, the low-pressure fluid in the top region wants to move the piston towards the right. Unfortunately, both these motions are not possible because the swash plate cannot swivel as shown. However, if this disc rotates, 
both piston motions are satisfied. Doesn't that sound wild? How can a few axial pistons rotate a disc? Recall that we already explained the logic behind this motion. This is how the track motor works. This rotation is transferred to a planetary gearbox arrangement. The output of the gearbox is transferred to a sprocket, which drives the track. The other track also has a similar but independent hydraulic motor arrangement. Here's another interesting question for you. How can an excavator execute a turn? By rotating the hydraulic motors at different speeds, the turn can be achieved easily. The swing motor we saw earlier also runs with the help of a similar hydraulic motor. Here, in addition to the motor there, should be a big slewing ring as well. In short, an excavator needs high pressure fluid for its arm operation, track rotation, and operating the swing motor. This high pressure fluid is supplied by a set of axial piston pumps. Although they look very similar to the hydraulic motor we saw earlier, this device specifically acts as a pump. The pump is driven by a huge diesel engine. These two pumps act as the heart of an excavator, essentially supplying the stream of blood responsible for keeping the excavator alive. Interestingly, just by adjusting the angle of the swash plate, the axial pump can vary the output pressure it's producing. Please have a look at this boom raise example. We know that in order to raise the boom, the high pressure fluid must reach this side of the piston. Let's now see how all these amazing technologies logically work together when high pressure fluid reaches the piston as a result of the driver moving the joystick. When the driver moves the joystick, this movement sends an electrical signal to the excavator's brain to an electronic control unit. At this point, it's the ECU's duty to make the high pressure fluid from the axial pump reach the cylinder of the boom. This is why this fluid valve is used. Can you tell what would happen to the fluid flow if the spool was moved to the right side? It's quite obvious that the high pressure fluid will easily enter the piston's bottom region, and low pressure fluid from the top of the piston will escape through the same valve. This will result in upward motion of the piston, or the boom rising up. If you want to lower the boom, just move the spool towards the left. By following the fluid flow arrows, you'll be able to explain this motion as well. You can see how drastically the connection of the fluid flow is modified due to the movement of the spool valves. At this stage, the only question that remains is how high to move the spool right and left this right and left movement is achieved again with the help of fluid pressure. The pressurized fluid required for the spool movement comes from a different pump, a small gear pump. A simple solenoid valve controls this fluid motion. As you can see, when the solenoid valve of the left side is activated, the solenoid valve spool moves up, and pressurized fluid from the gear pump moves the spool of fluid valves towards the right. If you want to move the spool of the fluid valve to the left, just activate the other solenoid valve. In short, when you move the joystick, the ECU sends a signal to the solenoid valve. The solenoid valve then releases pressurized fluid to control the fluid valve. You already know how the fluid valve controls the boom cylinder by properly channeling the high pressure fluid from the axial pump. In reality, the solenoid and main valves sit together as shown. Now that you've learned many of the fascinating technologies behind excavators, here's a small challenge for you. This excavator has to climb down, but the drop is incredibly steep. How can you get this excavator to climb down safely? This is what will happen if you try to climb down the excavator directly. Oh my god, a big accident. Now let's see the real operation of climbing down an excavator. In the first stage in excavator climb down operation, Touch this bucket to the ground and move the excavator body forward. You can see the excavator body is always remaining horizontal since the bucket is supporting that. And this is the maximum distance the excavator can come forward in this stage. It's looking amazing, right? Now for the second stage, you have to activate this cylinder and press down the bucket always down. And at this stage, move the excavator body further forward. 
Wow, you can see the angle got reduced here and uh, excavator is still horizontal. Now the last stage, activate this cylinder and make the body touch the ground like this. Wow, perfect. We have almost done with the operation. Remaining stage is quite simple. Just make the expert body move forward. And we are done with it. Such an easy and efficient operation to climb down an excavator. You may be aware that this channel is surviving thanks to support of our Patreons. So before leaving this video, if you can support our channel, I will be so grateful. Thank you for watching the video. Take care. Bye-bye.